Welcome to this look at new mods on Farming Simulator 22 with me, Mr. Sealy P. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Wednesday, the 17th of April. It's hump day, middle of the week. We've got some new mods and we've got some updates. The map Fairhead by Fast Farming and ES Agri has had an update. That doesn't say if it needs a new save game or not. The map Carpathian Countryside by Mr. Hector, and that's got an extensive change log on that. Um, it's one of those ones that you don't need to do a new save game. However, if you want a lot of the changes that have been made to take effect, you will need to do a new save game, a new save slot. Um, so you don't absolutely have to, but if you want those to take effect, you're going to need to. And then we've got the transport platform, 4000H by ADUB Modding, ABP Team, featuring Black Sheep Modding. Has also had an update. That's it. In front of me, we've got the All Deco Trees by Caliph Zeric. 0 0.6 megabytes download. These are two slots through to five slots. Now what this does, this pack, it brings in all the different tree types across multiple maps. Um, so if the map you are on doesn't have the tree types you particularly want, um, it adds them in. And it puts them in as lizard, and you might get duplicates. You will get duplicates because it puts a whole ton of them in, but it will add in all the extra ones that you don't have on the map on western worlds we don't have these ones here i don't think we have these but regardless that's what the mod does if we go into build mode go to landscaping and to trees and you'll see on whatever map you're on all the mods or well, the trees that are available on the map will be there and as we scroll further along we'll get to these that say lizard forestry so like i say you will get some duplicates but as you go across um Prices vary depending on the size, whether it's a, a small tree, a young tree, medium, large. So Cypress I don't think we have on here. Um, what were the other ones? Again, I might have, might be wrong, but potentially on here, it might have been the spruce trees we don't have. I think we have... We have got spruce, but it's these ones that are a little bit more... Not interesting, but you know what I mean? So... Scroll through, olive trees definitely aren't on here. And we've got the uh, olive tree, it actually just says olive tree in all three, but I would say young, small, medium and large uh, on your wool. I'm not sure if the scale on those is correct, although it's supposed to show it in earlier stages, earlier stages, and yeah, I guess, yeah, potentially it is. Um, they don't produce anything, the olive trees, but there you go. So that's the pack, adding in trees, all deco trees by Caliph. Zedek. Next, we have got the Grain Storage and Machine Hall. I just thought for decorative purposes, for thumbnails, you know. Um, I'd put some of the trees around here, but this is the building here. Um, so, Grain Storage and Machine Hall. Uh, this is by Noob Frags. It's 8.45 megabytes download, 24 slots, 45,000 to buy. It has colour options on it and it's got a 1.7 million litre capacity, but it is standard crop types. This is not a multi fruit silo. I do like these doors when they open like this. Very cool. Uh, we've got a smaller side door if you want to use that. Depends how immersive you want to be with it. Some people use the side door, go around, and they'll open the bigger doors from inside. But then if you've got a remote opener, it doesn't matter, it's all good. So silo is here, in and out for the 1.7 million litres. Light switches, so we can turn on or off our shed lights, are about. This end door has got a smaller door in it. So if we close the door, like that, and come to here, we can open the smaller door within the larger door. I would say you're probably best off closing it before you open the larger door, but that's entirely to you as well. So... It's a rather large building. This bit doesn't come with it. This is a separate mod, but again, I'll just put it in front of here to show you. So under build mode, under sheds, right there, slot count comes down to one, and we'll scroll through the different colour options so you can see. It's on the D-pad. I think we might have done them all now, have we? So there. Yeah. There we go. There's your colour options on the building. It's rather large. You're probably better off having a flat surface when you place it, but again, that's entirely up to you um, how you want to go about doing it. The Grain Storage and Machine Hall by Noob Frags. Next, we've got this. This is the Beet Pulp Plant by Acker Designer. 17.01 megabytes download, 23 slots, 25,000 to buy, 600,000 litre container. 
for putting in your sugar beet and this will then change it into sugar beet cut or sugar beet pulp however you refer to it um, you do get the trigger come up here if you back in with a trailer it will appear here but if you want to be more realistic you can tip with a bucket if you want to manage production plant is done here 1920 cycles per month 20 to 20 you don't lose anything in the process like i said 600,000 liters is what that will hold turn that on and then that will start chugging away cutting your sugar beet to its heart's content and then once your sugar beet cut is done and you've got some sugar beet cut that's taken out of the silo here round at the side now this doesn't have a color option actually i'm just going around this i don't think i always get because you've got the zoddle zot mods always have I say always um have the options for lights on and that kind of stuff and i don't think this does um but anyway this you'll find under build mode under production under factories and it is right there slot count will come down from 23 down to one again this one there's no color option on this one you get it just like that so that's the beet pulp plant by Acker designer next we've got oh right past, look at that oh look at that oh it's like I've done this before. This is the Manitou CBG 2450MS by 76 Max. 4.65 megabytes download, four slots on console, 2,500 litre capacity. This is for telehandlers. Um, you have the option for Manitou attachment, which basically when you slide this in, it kind of becomes one. Um, and then you've got a telehandler attachment. Again, it depends. It will still attach no matter what you put on it, but it just if you want to go for a bit more of realism. There's no colour options, I don't think, on this one. Uh, so if we go down to our tools and we go to telehandler tools, that one right there, 3,800. Slot account comes down to one. So that said, no, there's no colour options or anything like that, but you've got um, attacher type, Manitou, or telehandler. Those are two choices. Uh, if we start this up... When we drive forward and hook up, you'll see it kind of all becomes one with the there you go. Look at that, like it's always supposed to be there. That opens pretty quick actually, that's pretty rapid. I'm not gonna lie. There you go. And that's it. That's the Manitou CBG 2450MS by 76 Max. Next we have got uh, over here. Yara gonna love this. Couldn't help it, sorry. This is the Yara N Sensor ALS up on the roof there. Now, this may work out cheaper than going for the wing mirror mounted system. So, this is by Jonas, or, or Jonas, could be Jonas. 1.11 uh, megabyte download, two slots on console. Now, in the description, there's a whole load of information about the real world version of this first generation yara n sensors manufactured in 2006 2018 i'm not going to read the whole thing um but explains all about how it all works in farming summit 22 the sensor in combination in combination with the precision farming dlc has the function of recording the nitrogen maps in more detail while driving it means the fertilizer can be used more efficiently and the yield potential can be increased on your maps now what I love about this, it says, after attaching, the end sensor can be placed on the track to use the mouse button. Now, it doesn't say how you attach it initially, so it was an interesting one, and I found a couple of things that you might need to be aware of. So, the sensor is up there on the roof. What I'm going to do, I'm going to detach that for the moment. So the sensor is on the roof. Now, if I switch to it and press detach, it drops like that. And then we, with left stick... No, hang on. Let's attach it first. Right, left stick. So one with it attached, sorry. L1, right stick up and down, side to side. And then R1, right stick. So we've got adjustment on this. Hope you want to go about it. But what I have found is you want to attach it on the front three-point link, which is a problem if you don't have a tractor with a front three-point link. And when what you want to do when you detach it you want to detach it from a height. Now, it could be the map. It could be... I've said this before because this has a water course on it as well. If you try and put it down the ground and release it, it will disappear into the ground. I hope this doesn't go completely. So, disappears into the ground. If I hook it back up again and lift that a bit higher, do it from out there, and now detach it, it will sit there. So, it's, it's a case of trying to find the perfect position for that to be in. And I will show you why... So it's going to take a little bit longer. Be careful you don't drive into it. Um, why you don't want to hook this onto the rear. I bought the other tractor out. I don't know why I did that because I don't really need to. Um, that being said, you watch it work now. 
So if I attach it to the rear, and this is designed to work with vehicles that are running nitrogen. So I hook it up now and then go through my same options. I've got to make sure I go the right way. There we go. Up. Like that. Bring it where I want it to be. And I've got my adjustment up and down, side to side. I can sit that just where I want it. Now, obviously, that doesn't quite fit on the roof there, but that's all right. You can bring it right down if you want it sort of more flush fitting or sit it on top, however you want to go about it. And now that's kind of in place. But then what I found was when I attached the rear mounted three point spreader, well, let's see if it does it. It disappears. Um, which is odd because. Yeah, I mean, so I'm assuming it, it is supposed to be put on with a front three-point link. But like I say, if you've decided you want to go with front weights on the front because you're putting something heavy on the back, I don't know. It, it could be an issue, let's just say that. I don't think there's an option for rotating it. Side to side. No, the other bit's the window. So I can't rotate it round, but I, I, because it has been attached on the rear three-point link, it's not liking it when you hook something else on. So like I say, that's just something to be aware of. You might need to be hooking that on to the front. But then again, what I need to do, when I come to detach this now, if I adjust it and bring it down to the ground, I don't want it to go all the way to the ground, probably to about there again. Detach it. And it will sit, there you go. So you will work out roughly where you want it to be. So I, th I would say put it on the front. And then all that will happen is, because I've got my precision farming on, if we go to our map there, so as you can see our nitrogen levels, um, and you can see that there's some orange in there as well. Now according to that, the detailed description, once you've got this hooked on, this should give you a much better... Um, I mean you could just put it on the bonnet if you wanted to, it's, inter it's entirely up to you where you place it on your vehicle, it hasn't got to be on the roof. But I think that's sort of more likely where they are. Now there's not an option, you just switch back to your vehicle, there's not an option to kind of lock that in place. That's just, that's there now. Um, you've just got to be careful if you've got other implements and things. I suppose that's the other thing as well. If you've got other implements that have got other, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, options and controls. So what we'll do now we turn this spreader on so with that attached it's actually oh I haven't got a crop in it have I no turn that off well that's curious let's look at ones we've got a crop in Well, that shouldn't be put anything down um, because these crops are already grown but anyway that's what it's supposed to do that's how it works um, obviously in the proper cycle because this map I'm not got I'm not don't usually have this set up for precision farming so what you would normally do is plant your crop then do your nitrogen because it reacts to how much um, nitrogen that particular crop needs and normally you can't put your application rate down or put anything down once your crop has grown so that's you know, not the best way of showing off but that's what it does that's how it works and that would be my advice for attaching and like I say if you have tried to detach it and it seems to have vanished off your vehicle or vanished into the ground that could be why so just be aware of that so yeah I don't know if that will change with the rear attachment I think because it attaches you can only have one thing on the rear three point at a time I want to get this just right so when I detach it nope it sort of springs. Let's go up a little bit more. Do it again. Kind of. Um, so there we go. So this you will find under... Is that under miscellaneous? Out on the end. Mm, so this is... When I was... I didn't look at the price of it. I put my details down of what it was. Two slots comes down to one. It's 1.11 um, megabyte download. There's no options on it, get like that, and it's 27,400. But if you've got precision farming installed, a lot of the tractors give you the option to have the crop sensors on the wing mirrors 
And I think it's only 14,000 something to have the crop sensors on the wing mirrors. So I don't know if it is that much better at detecting than the standard in-game ones or not. I suppose test, you might know, have to do some testing on that. But anyway, that's what it is. Anyway, the RN sensor. Sorry, I spent ages on that. ALS by Jonas. Uh, next. We've got this. This is the Grimmer BLF 200. This is, well, um, again, this is a curiosity. Um, this is by 76 Max. It's 4.6 megabytes download, five slots, 3.4 meters wide. Now, it, it's supposed to be a potato ridger. Um, that's the design of it. It's a, it's a ridger. And this has got um, ridge markers as well. So if you want to go old school with your, you know, rather than using GPS or just eyeballing it, it's got ridge markers. However, this is not found under potato technology. You'll find it under subsoilers. Um, and it works as a plow slash subsoiler. It doesn't actually ridge. So whilst it is in there as a potato ridger, that's what the description says, um, potato ridger is used to prepare the land. Um, but it is under subsoilers, and you'll see when we operate it. So if we go to our subsoilers which are just there. That's where you'll find it. 15 grand, 3.4 metres wide, 160 horsepower required, no options on it. If we start the tractor up, we do our ridge markers. So, ridge marker left, ridge marker right, pull back up if you want to do your ridge markers. If we create fields, so it will act like a plough, so if we allow create fields and drop it down It will create fields. If I limit to fields, so as you can see, it, whilst it's supposed to be a potato ridger, it is acting as a plough, and it is under subsoilers. So it's subsoiling it, but it is giving you a ploughed texture and look. It's going at nine miles an hour. So like I said, take that however you will. I mean, that's that's the design of it. That's what it's supposed to be, and that's what it's doing. So. As I always say, I'm showing you the mods, I'm showing you what they are, what they're doing, how they're operating, at least for me, <laughs> whether they'll operate differently for you or not, I don't know. Um, but that's the Krimmer BLF 200 by 76 Max. So, along with that, not along with that, it's by a different modder, but it kind of fits in quite nicely. Uh, next, we've got this. This is the Lizard S208 S227 by Hashtel EE and RMC. 7.06 megabytes download, five slots, 1.9 meters wide, with 180 litre capacity. This is a potato cedar sower planter. Again, however you want to refer to it. Nicely detailed. So this you'll find under potato technology. Right there, 1,500, 20 horsepower required. So we've got the option of the 1986 version, 1989 version one and version two. Then we, that, so that's all on the S208. Then we go to the 227, which is the 2003 version one and version two. I don't want to change some of that between version one. Version one, version two, version one. Oh, and it's, that, it's, it's just got a little bit of a different decal on the side, just there. Uh, then we've got the option of on the wheels. We've got blades, we've got spurs, or we've got both blades and spurs, or nothing at all. We've got platform, yes or no, so we can take the foot plates off. Main color, anything on that palette does the framework. Design color does the main bulk tank, and then the next design color does the shoots so the belts go up pick the potatoes out take them down the shoots drop them at the bottom ready for planting that's it so start this up now it does say unfold at the moment there's no potatoes in those little shoots unfold planter puts potatoes on them and they're good to go now it doesn't say if this is a direct drill i don't think this has been mulched i don't think it would be let's lower that down Oh, okay. I didn't say it was, but it's going straight in. Look at that. Nice animation. Taking the potatoes up, taking them down, into the ground. Job done. Putting in the ridges as it goes. Now with these, usually, 
and this is no different. Um, this gives you the option to fill it with seed or potatoes. If you're going to get it from a bulk buying station or something like that, it's cheaper to put potatoes in than it is to put seed in, normally, because <laughs> potatoes are just dead worth less, so you're better off putting potatoes in. Or if you've got potatoes left over from previous crops, which a lot of farmers do, you can use those. So that's the Lizard S208 S227 by Hashtel EE and RMC. Next. We have these making a welcome return although these again <laughs> i think we find all the problems today i don't know why <laughs> this is the lizard t127 and t t127 plus by budovec team these are it's 9.55 megabytes download three slots each we've got the eight bale and we've got so that's the standard um 127 t127 that has eight bales the 127 plus does 12 bales and uh, now unlike a lot of the more modern the fs22 round bale auto stack trailers that when you unload them they unload them flat in a long sausage these ones unload upright which has its pros and its cons pros sort of less ground space because they're being stacked vertically but i always found unless the ground was very level if you've got a bit of a wobble the stacks could go over so you just have to be careful but what i have also found with a lot of these auto load bale trailers when you go to unload them you do have the option to abort unloading so for the thumbnail, I put them up so it was ready to unload. Looks great for the thumbnail. I aborted unloading, but what it hasn't given me the option to do is put that back into transport position, um, which is a bit of a problem. So unless I go back to unloading, unload them and reset it, um, it won't allow me to abort unloading and then I might decide, actually, I don't want to put them there. I want to drive the other side of the map and put them somewhere else. But it's not, you know, like I say, it's not allowing me. You watch me jump back in the tracks and allow me to do it now. Anyway, these you'll find under bale loaders. So the sort of the Anderson RBMs, they're the ones that they'll lay, lay flat. Um, the Arcusin is for the square ones. Um, and we move out here to the little bales pack ones. So here we are. T127, 127 plus, slot counts come down to one from three, 39 grand, 45 grand, respectively, eight bales, 12 bales. Options are the same on both. The uh, 127 is a single axle, the 127 plus is a double axle, so we'll show you on the double axle, but the op options are all exactly the same. So we've got Trelleborg, Nokian, Michelin, BKT, Fredestein, Lizard, back, and then we, we've got on the Trelleborg, we've got standard and wide, and then we've got main color, any one of those colours, which does all that. Rim colour, we've got the grey, we've got a beige, and then we've got some silvers with a galvanised on the end, if you want that. And the licence plate option there too. Nice and straightforward. So, let's start this up. Now, as you can see, normally you would have the option to put it back into transport position, but it's not giving me the option. So, if I unload bales now... Now obviously, you might go for the 8 bale, because you might have sh um, sheds and storage that's lower. You might go for the 12 bale if you've got higher storage, or you put them outside, or whatever you want to do. Now, something else I found as well. I tried these both with the liftable bales pack, and it said the bales were not compatible. Because um, I, I tried different sizes, and I started with the 150cm first, then did a 125, and both it was saying not compatible. So it doesn't seem to be working with the liftable bales pack, only with the standard in-game bales is what I've found anyway. Um, so if we unload bales here, please don't fall over. What would often happen is because there were forks underneath, when you drove away, the forks could sometimes cause them to fall, but seems to be okay. And then lower loading platform, and this should reset that pickup. Do the same with the one next hit, we'll do the 12. There they go, it's resetting it. It's curious. It's a minor thing. Um, in most situations, when you get to where you're going, you'll unload them and be happy with that. But because you have got that ability, at this point, I can abort unloading. It's not letting me put it back in, like I say. A small thing, but it's worth noting. So if I unload bells here, it's going to fall over. They are quite tall stacks, aren't they? No, we're all right. We're good. That's what I'm going to do now. Swing this around. So what you would usually do, I mean, you've, you've probably seen these operating before. Unless you're new to the game, you might be new to the game, which is absolutely fine. So, 
the difference between auto loading when you drive past and they just go dum 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 and just jump onto the trailer and auto stacking auto stack these are real world things they are, they absolutely exist you wouldn't normally do it like this in a stack um but oh that was lucky wasn't it <laughs> I won't put them all on, but you can you can see how it works and how it operates. So there we go. That's the Lizard T127 and T127 Plus by Budovic Team. Which brings you on to the last of the mods for today, and it's a pack. And it's all these. This is the Magzi Wheel Loader Pack by Fred Modding and Nico Do 55 22.51 megabytes download. These are twos and ones in their slots. You'll find them under wheel loader tools, and as you can see, we have a selection of buckets, silage grab, pallet forks, log fork, and then we go through various different iterations of these ones. Both of these two here are high high tip, high dump buckets. That one's not a high dump, but this is this is the largest capacity. I think this is a 4,000 litre. These are three fives. I'm going to show you them in the options anyway. Um, the ones that have got tines that are different colours, for example there, do I do ones over there as well? The options in there, you've got black or red tines. That's an 8,000 litre silage fork, I think it was, if I recall correctly. So, if we go into here and we go to our wheel loader tools, so we start there. Is that resume shovel or a resume? Uh, resume shovel. Uh, it says... 3,300 litres, 4 grand, slot count comes down to 1. Like I said, they're all um, 2s and 3s anyway, so they're not high on the slot count. So this one, we've got no front blade or front blade, so you've got the teeth or blade, no colour option. Silage fork, colour option is, as I said, for the tines, 8,000 litre. The pallet fork works as all the other pallet forks do in-game. They will open the, the jaws, the forks will open wider or narrower if you want to. Uh, log fork. Big old log fork. There's no tension straps on any of these. They are as they are. The manure grab fork, 3,000 litre, and that is for forage stuff only. It doesn't do everything. That is that is a manure grab for those type of crops. And again, we can change the tines if we want to. Then we've got the manure fork. Again, main colour, does the tines. 2,000 litre. Doesn't have a, a grab bit on the front. Then we move on to the high dump bucket, 3,500 litres. This one, we've got no front blade or front blade on a front blade on there. Uh, then we've got the high dump bucket which has got the claw on the front as well. 3,500 litres as well but that's got the claw on it. It doesn't, in real, in, in the game, not in real life, in the game it doesn't make any difference because stuff's not going to fall out um, anyway unless you tip it forward. Um, but it has got there on there if you want it. You might want to use it for, um, I mean, would you use it for grabbing logs? Maybe. Again, no front blade or front blade on that one. And then the final one is the grapple bucket. Again, does pretty much everything. 4,000 litres. Um, and that one has got no front blade or blade. And then it's got on the sides here. Again, if you want to go for a bit more realism with the bucket, you can go without border or with border. So it just closes those sides in. So it would be more of a bucket and things wouldn't fall out. But if you were going to use it for logging, for example, you could get a log in there. If you wanted to use it like that, which makes it quite a handy bit of kit. Big, sturdy lump of metal. Now, I'm not going to show you all of them. The log fork opens and closes. The pallet forks open and close their width. Um, that's a standard bucket. But what I'm going to show you... I mean, again, I suppose opens and closes. This is exactly the same. But again, for transport, like that. Unfold. Nice smooth animation unfolds it for operation and what i've also done is grabbed a few base game wheel loaders just to show you that they'll work on any wheel loader their wheel loader tools that's what they're supposed to do um this one on here just again just to show you the opening and closing of the grab on the front nice and smooth and then we've got a high dump so these this one and that one next to it are high dump but this one's got, because this has got this on it as well, so we've got side to side does that, and up and down does the high dump. So, let's swing that around into the light a little bit. There we go. So we've got open and closing of that. And then raise and lower in, so you can do both at the same time if you want. Like so. Nice and smooth.
and then finally the last one which is the 4000 litre has the core in the front but it's not a high dump and like I said, I've, done, I've done the sides on that one but you don't have to it's in type 2 and that's it that's the Magzi wheel loader pack by Fred Modding Nico Do 55 that is it for the mods for Wednesday the 17th of April I hope you found this useful and informative in some way, shape or form. If you have, please give us a like. If you don't subscribe yet, please do. If you want to leave a comment, feel free. And if you want to share this video, then please be my guest. Whatever you should choose to do. Thanks for watching.